Wonderful people, I am Daniel from Gear Focus, and today I get to hang out with Marcos Rocha. Marcos is a monster behind the camera. Uh, you've definitely seen his work hailing from the Bay Area. Marcos is a phenomenal DP, and I'm super excited to get to hang out with him today. Marcos, what would you add? Well, nothing much. I think you did great with that introduction. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like you said, I am based in the San Francisco Bay Area. I am doing video work. You know, the most of the work I do is corporate, commercial, documentaries, a lot of interviews. Um, so that's what I get hired for. Yeah. How long have you been in the Bay Area? How long have you been doing DP work? So DP work for a couple of years now, maybe two, three years. Uh, before, I used to do all kinds of videography work. Now I'm definitely over the years specializing in just uh, DPing, which means more uh, bigger projects with crews. I think that's a big difference as opposed to yeah. videography is just you're just working by yourself. You're doing everything. Heck, you might even do photography on the side, you know? So you, you do a lot of everything, whereas... Uh, I guess when, when it becomes more specialized, it's just you do one thing and you try to do it really well. There's all kinds of flavors of DPs. Some, some are maybe just do music videos or cars and, you know, beauty and hair, whatever. I specialize in, in more interview style, like documentaries, yeah. something, talking head, that kind of stuff. Wow. Yeah, I love, I love this. It's such an interesting, um, you have such an interesting lens to sort of give, I think, folks who are... Uh, stumble across this on YouTube and are visiting Gear Focus on a you know daily basis here. And I think one of the things that I'm curious about uh, for everyone who's watching, uh, it's phenomenal. The amount of gear that Marcos has is ludicrous. Even just setting up for this uh, Zoom, you know, Zoom meeting, we got like a lot of stuff going on. I'm curious, like maybe what are some, um, what are some of your tried and true, like road tested, always reliable, like go to's? Yes, as far as camera, I, I like cameras that you can record audio into because, like I said, a lot of the work I'm doing is uh, interviews, and often I get asked, can we get the audio internally, right? And so it's always a plus to have a camera that can do that, you know, with good preamps. Not every camera can do that, especially lower in the consumer side. They might be, t be able to take audio, but not like professional audio, right? And so you, you want a camera that can take good preamps. I think that'll save you a lot of time in the editing and also to, you know, when you're on those jobs that require good audio, right? And you don't have a dedicated audio person. Um, so that's one. Uh, I mean, a good tripod, spending a good tripod. I've done the mistake of buying cheaper tripods and you end up upgrading and upgrading. So like it's like, it, you know, I hear people say, just buy it once, you know, buy something really good. I think a tripod gets um, people, when you're beginning, you try to get the cheapest thing because it's not a sexy purchase. Yeah, is there anything maybe we missed from some of the tried and true gear, but I'm curious, like, um, you know, what are, what's, what's just some of the gear that you literally couldn't do without? Yeah, I think now, you know, I'm at a different point in my career, right? So it all depends where you're at. Everyone's different. Everyone has different things. To me, it's more nowadays, it's more about the non-sexy gear because I already have the cameras and the lights. Those are checked off. Obviously, you need all those things, right? But now it's more about making my life easier when I'm having to go shoot on set. That means buying like a nice rock and roller, having that if I'm... Let's say I'm not, I don't have my van with me, I'm taking my car. I want to unload fast, you know, and so that saves me a lot of trips. If I can put most of the stuff there, maybe do two trips and I'm not having to carry stuff. Or if I do have my van, like I bought a hamper, you know, and just throw everything in there. I have a mag liner just, and then if I have some help, we can load in maybe in one or two trips. So that, that, you know, like those things, you know, you know, I'm at a different place, right? So those kinds of things, uh, anything that makes my life easier and I, and, I, and I can save my back, any anything that'll support me, you know, for the long run. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, when you're talking about getting some help from folks too, I'm just, I'm curious, like what, um, how often are you working solo versus working with a, a larger team? Oh, that's a good question. 
So I would say about 50% of the time I'm working by myself and with someone else. Like nowadays I try to at least get one person with me just to help me unload because it's just everything turns out nicer when you get help, right? And like the other 50% I'm working with a crew of four or five or six, you know, or and it goes up, you know, so... If I'm doing interviews, which is the majority of the time, and maybe it's just me and someone else. So I would say that's the majority of the time is it's uh, myself and someone else helping me out. It, it, especially if we have two cameras, I always try to get a second per, uh, person to operate that camera. Um, especially like I'm handling audio and lights. It's just, it's just less of a hassle to get everything set up you know it's less stressful and it's funner to have someone there that's so yeah that's that's really interesting it kind of um you know it kind of brings me to my next question which is really like you know for someone who's 50 percent of the time you're working with some people can't always get that help can't always you know it's just not always available or in the budget right sometimes for a client too like how do you size up doing more with less right and I think that to do more with less, you just have to be very, come with the plan. You know, one of the things I like to do is sketch out, whether on a, on a piece of paper or on the computer, this is the camera I'm going to use, this is where it's going to go, this is uh, the light I'm going to use, this is where the mic's gonna, microphone's going to be. Everything's sketched out, so I have a plan, and I, I write out exactly all the gear I need, and... And that way, I know exactly what to pack, right? And I and I can show that to if someone's helping me. This is the plan. This is the yeah. picture of what we're doing, and also it's a checklist for me to the day before pack everything and have it ready to go, sitting by the door or already in my car or my van, wherever, whatever I'm using. Uh, so you you as the jobs as you progress, and especially as you're working with bigger crews, you have to be very clear about everything that you're bringing because you're billing that to the agency or the client. And so you just have to do more planning so you don't forget anything. Because if you forget one thing, you could look like a total amateur. That, you know, your whole production could come to a halt if you don't have that one wire, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so you have to be super organized, you know? That, that's one of the other skill sets you need. You just be organized, be very, um, come with the plan, you know? That's wild. Yeah, I hadn't even considered that. Was sketching, like, who who taught you to do the sketching, like, the homework of doing this stuff? Is that common practice? Is like, what is that? Tell me more about that. It comes with uh, the pressure, right, of, you know, trying to perform well. You just, you learn, well, I learned that I'm a very visual person. I needed to write everything out so I can feel confident going into the shoot, right? Especially when I'm, you're starting out, you're doing everything yourself. You're setting up the lights, the audio, and everything you, by yourself. You, Well, personally, I, some people can roll just in. They go in. They can wing it. I'm not that kind of person. I like to have everything on paper because if I, like I said, if I forget something, I, I just kick myself. You know, it's hard, very hard for me to move on from it. You know, I, I don't let go of things that easily. <laughs> yeah. even, even, even nowadays, after every shoot, I always come out thinking, mm, this could have been better. I think about all the things I could have done better, you know, and I write those out. I'm a very, I write things out a lot. I write a lot, you know, this, this could have been better. I, have, I make lists all the time. This is what I need to do for next time. I need to, do, 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 do. so it's, it's, like, it's like a race car driver, you know, they're just making little tweaks to be that much faster, more efficient. So that's how I approach it. Nowadays, I, I, I use, um, there's a, this website called Film Set Objects, and, and, and so you, you get all these um, little pictures, PNG files, and you, you can, you know, it, it represents like a camera, specific camera, specific light, and you light and you make uh, little drawings like with vectors, you know, and so you can drop everything in. Wow, that's, that's honestly incredible. I mean, that, yeah. Man, that brings me back to like the... Um I played in band for years and years and years, right? And the things that we would always have to bring to each venue 
was always our stage, uh, what was it called? Like our stage set or whatever, right? It was a diagram that showed where everything was, the monitors, where the bass player stood, what each drum piece was. I mean, that's that's crazy. That's really interesting. And unfortunately for you, just out of frame here is a bunch of uh, whiteboards, right, that I cleaned off like nicely before this, but I was taking pictures. I'm like, I can't forget. I got always writing this stuff down too. It's just crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's... Yeah, it's just it's, too many wires. You know how I, yeah, even with, uh, you know, if you do music, you know, you're performing live, it's a crazy amount of wires. And if you forget one, or if, if you don't have a backup to the to that backup, you know, you're you could be you know you could be in big trouble. You know, and 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 everyone's you gotta perform to a degree. We're also performing live for the client. They're watching. You know, sometimes they're watching. They're just looking at you. Uh, you know, to see your. Uh, your experience, you know, so you don't definitely you don't, you don't want to have any hiccups because that that could cost you the next job or the referrals, whatever. Yeah, this is that's that's so interesting to think about how you're being like that performance of yours is being sort of judged live too, just like it would be for playing live music or, you know, theater or uh, these other sort of creative uh, pursuits. That's so interesting. When you're like sizing up an opportunity like this and you've got, you know, your vectors done and all that stuff, I'm curious, like what circumstances call for professional gear versus like, I guess what you'd consider consumer gear, right? Right. Yeah. When I got started, I had the consumer gear, you know, then that's what you need. You know, you need the cheapest tripod you can get on because you're still kind of like a hobbyist. You might not even be getting paid that much. So and then the clients you're dealing with, they don't really care, you know, what you have. They just want that video, you know. So you're dealing with clients who are not going to judge you based on your gear, you know. But as you progress, well, as I've progressed in my in my career, I dealing, I'm dealing more with agencies and bigger production companies. And now the expectation goes up, right? And so they're, they're for the most part, requesting a specific camera, or the, or a cinema camera. They they want you to show it, you know, they're to to show up with it, you know, or to own it, right? And if you let's say say I have a consumer camera, they might put you at a lower level. They might not take you seriously because they might categorize you as someone who does not have that experience, who has not touched um, the higher end cameras, the professional gear. And so it's just a a, a signal. You're throwing out to the world or to these people, hey, I, I'm from a professional, right? Look at my gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so that's where it matters. It's just you're throwing signals. It's the reason why realtors buy Mercedes, you know, or nice cars, because they have to drive their clients around and they want to represent success, you know, or that they're, you know, you know what I'm saying? So the, the looks oh, yeah, matter yeah. for that particular industry. And I think that that, that is a way to signal it also makes you think, for me, I know when I fought, first bought my first cinema camera, is it was, I was just on the brink of like uh, interacting or networking with those type of clients that wanted the cinema cameras, right? And as soon as I got it, I thought of myself differently. I felt different. You know, you show up differently because you're like, this is a professional camera. It gives you this uh, confidence, it makes you feel like, yo, you're progressing, right? And it sounds superficial, but hey, there, there's something to say about it. I think there's, there's totally, that's totally valid. There's absolutely some reality to that. I, I actually love that. Uh, let's, I want to peel that back just for a second because I, I think it's fun. I, I think others will too. Like, set the scene for me. Like, what was that like when you showed, what, what was the camera? And what was it like when you showed up with that? Like, yeah, walk me through that. Right. Uh, so th I bought the Sony FS7 and that was a camera that was being requested a lot, during, you know, when I bought it. And as you know, the, I remember on my first shoots, I just walked in with more confidence. You know, I was working with other videographers and they're like, whoa, you know. And so you get those type of reactions from from people that are doing the type of work I was doing, which was more videography, simple stuff, you know stuff where it really doesn't matter, you know? Um, but, you know, so they look at you at a different level. And the same thing happens when, um, you know, I got hired to shoot on this documentary because I have the FS7, right? So that, that was like an entry into that world, right? 
Uh, but then there was other crews that were red owners. Red is like way more expensive cameras. It has more of a reputation and hype and all that. But all the crew was googly over the red owners. Nice. And, and so, you know, you, you get to experience those things, right? The, you know, there's different levels or, I guess, uh, clout that is, having a certain camera gives you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, and in that, um, in that, I mean, you did you did eventually make not the switch, right? Because you just added a, a red to your arsenal, essentially, right? Because uh, uh, for everyone listening, Marcos just put out an incredible video uh, through uh, sponsored by Gear Focus, where he talks about the Komodo you've got, the the Ursa G two, and that FX nine. We were just talking about your first cinema camera, that first confidence finding, you know, piece of gear for you, which is just super cool. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, what are you finding? Like, it, you you made this incredible video. Maybe you could give people just a, a small preview or idea of what what that video is all about. Sure, I, I made the video because on, on on YouTube you find a lot of people, you know, the videos that come out saying saying like, I bought the red and it was thirty thousand dollars I spent on it. And it was a huge mistake. You know, it did not get me more clients, and. I totally get that. And there's also other like, this is the best camera in the market. You know, these catchy phrases about the best, the killer, the, 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 the. And so I wanted to put out something that says there's no perfect anything. There's no camera killer of, or anything like that. You know, I, I explain the difference of these cameras and where they make sense. I bought them because I was getting requests for them. So I, I guess I, I don't fall in love with a certain manufacturer where I've seen people fall in love with a manufacturer, whether it's Red or Sony, and they're like, I'm a Sony boy, you know, I love Sony, everything, and, and Red, they suck because they're, they're like a sports scene. It's just, they, they hate on it, and, and I'm not like that. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I like it for this. I like Red for this. I like Sony for that. I like Black Magic for this. And uh, depending on the type of job, I'll go with this camera. If, if, and so I'm very fluid as to what cameras I would use. You know, I, I just don't find that it's, it's, a, it's good to be so ingrained in one body because, uh, well, especially now I, I get asked to shoot on all kinds of different cameras, whether Canon, Sony and all that. And you just learn to like those cameras and work with them and just work with their limitations. and. You get to see what are the, uh, the good points and the bad points, you know, between all these bodies. And, and I think the, the fact that I do this as a job, as a DOP, I get to experience all these cameras. And so you don't get that experience when you're first starting out. You only have your one camera and that's all you have, right? Uh, so, you know, I wanted to share that with, with people who are thinking about these cameras since they're very popular. That's so, that's so fun. It's so fun to just kind of have that, that flexibility. I mean, that nimbleness to be able to switch between cameras, the, um, I don't know, I just really, I admire sort of that approach to it as opposed to just being a, uh, a fanboy, right. Of the, the, the coolest piece out there right now that hit the hottest thing. That's really, that's really fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, one thing that's coming to mind and I just feel like it's been, uh, I don't know it's been present on my mind and maybe you feel uh, I'd just love to get your take on it like in this there's such a call right now for like social media and being present and being seen and all of this kind of stuff yeah and you know and I'm, I'm yeah what, what are you thinking here for the longest time is like you got you got to be out there be out there let yourself be known and you're promoting yourself that's part of the reason I have my YouTube channel I wanted a way to promote myself, especially when I when I I started my YouTube channel before I ever got paid to do video. You know, I did it as a way to gain experience, to do something publicly where people could see the type of work I was doing. And in the beginning, I was showing uh, put clients like, "Hey, look at my YouTube channel. I know what I'm doing with video. I can do it for you, right?" Uh, so yeah, that's why I did it. I didn't have any paid work, you know, so why not? I was constantly on YouTube and, and making videos. I, there was no other work I was getting. But over time, you start getting clients and now that's eating into your time. So you, there's less time I can devote to YouTube and that's what's happened over the years. Um, oh, I saw. And so over the years, you just get more work and you can, 
the amount of time you have in a day, it's just like, ooh, do I work on my client projects or do I do more social media? And so that starts to compete with, with each other, right? And, and now I'm just, so, so, other, so many things I have to do in my business. Now it's a business, right? I, as a video, I'm, I guess I'm a um, full-time freelancer and I have to follow up with clients, email, uh, sometimes I edit, sometimes I just have to make plans, proposals, and all this other stuff. And so it's harder to stay on top of social media, but then I still need to promote myself. And so it's this constant battle. I was just gonna ask you, yeah, what is that? I mean, yeah, what is that like, yeah. Yeah, it's a constant battle because, uh, you know, I also follow people on Instagram, people that do what I do, and I see that they're working on all these cool projects, right? And I'm not posting as much because it's just, I, I just can't, I, I, it's not me. I, I, it's a battle, you know, I try to post here and there, but when I'm on set, it's very hard to me f to focus on social media because I'm really super focused on the, the job at hand, which is what I got paid for, you know? And I feel like if I'm very active on Instagram or whatever channel or, and I'm like uh, showing, oh, look at me working, it's, it's very hard for me to do that because that takes me away from, from being super focused on what I'm doing. And, and people think, well, I already set up the interview or I already set up the shot. Now let me, let me share. What I found if you do that, you're actually, you could have put more time into perfecting that shot even way more. And you can progress your, you know, the, your, I guess your expertise that much more if you just pay attention, you know? That's what happened. So like I would set up a shot, like it's ready. Now social media, right? Instead of like, no, forget social media. Let me look at the shot. Let me, let me explore it. All right. Yeah. Let me make this little tweak here. Let me move the plant. Let me move this light. Let me dim it a little bit. And so you end up spending another 20% of your time perfecting the shot to make it just that much better. But that's what makes the difference between someone that's super professional and someone that's good, you know? And so that's what I, what I am prioritizing nowadays is just like, I want to like make these little tweaks that bring me to the next level, right? And that means my social media, is, I'm sacrificing the social media to a degree. So it's, it's what I want. It's, I don't know if it's a smart choice because obviously it's good to always be promoting yourself, but it's about it makes it. sense. I mean, it makes, yeah, what you're saying makes sense. I love that idea around like just perfecting those shots and making those little tweaks and giving that extra 20% that otherwise just becomes like a quick Instagram story or whatever it might be for folks out there. I mean, that's just so, it's really compelling. I think you make kind of a strong case for, uh, Staying present, <laughs> staying like really focused. Uh, our, our focus is being pulled every which way nowadays, right? And even if I'm at home, I'm not doing anything. If I'm looking at Instagram, it, I always feel bad after I'm done uh, looking at Instagram because everybody's doing better work, it's staying busier than I am as a con as a as a whole. They're all doing better than me, right? It feels like, I'm, I'm, what am I doing here? I'm not working today. I'm a freelancer. I should be out there. I should be creating work. I should, why am I not at that level? And uh, so I dialed, definitely I dialed back from social media, especially Instagram, uh, YouTube. I mean, it goes on and on, right? It, it's, just, it's just a big, for the most part, it's a big time waste, a big energy sucker for me. And, and I, I I'm definitely trying not to compare myself, but I think that's human nature, you know? And when you're on those platforms, you're gonna do it whether you like it or not. I just, yeah, I mean, to I mean totally, like humility, like, yeah, like we're just kind of constantly in that comparison game. It's actually pretty interesting though. So like in, um, from your perspective, I think there's gonna be a lot of people who watch this video and look up to you, right? They'll aspire to have, you know, to, to do some of the things you're doing. And I'm just curious, like, who are some of those DPs that today you still look up to? Yeah, there, there's a bunch of people I, I, I follow in my local area and I like what they're doing, right? And I reached out to them. I've actually interviewed them for my YouTube channel. I wanted to ask and pick their brain of how did you get there, right? And every, every story is different. Um, you know, obviously, the, it, it, it helps to have mentors. And so I... I it's a good excuse for me to have a YouTube channel and interview them because uh, 
some degree I'm, I'm giving them, um, making this public, this education, because I learned a lot from other people, right? And I'm always keeping that in, in the back of my head, the, you know, the, how can I learn more instead of, you see, this is where the, it gets tricky, right? Because you want to learn from other people who are better than you, but at the same time, don't make yourself, uh, yourself feel bad that you're not at their level. It's like, you still want to learn, right? You obviously want to look at better work, but don't also, you don't want to discourage yourself from continuing because you feel like you're never going to get there. Yeah. I mean, well, I feel like the, the middle ground there, right? It's just like, it's curiosity, right? Like stay curious, right? This is like, I feel like maybe too buzzy of a way to make it sound, but it's like curiosity is like that great, that enchanting part of us and our human experience, right? Where we get to stay curious and stay motivated by those things without the lens of judgment or like without the fear of, of judging myself or doing those things. I don't know. I mean, that, that's what I'm gathering from what you're hearing today, what I'm hearing from you today. Um, yeah. Is there anything else out there you want to just like get off your chest or say or bring that we didn't get, get to in this thing as we sort of come to a, uh, inevitably a close here? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, the, like I, like I mentioned, um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything specific. I do, I, I do want to circle back to one of my favorite pieces of gear or uh, one of my favorite pieces of things I can't do without. It has been uh, my uh, Walter White uh, mannequin head. What? This is the most shocking thing you've brought in a frame the whole time. <laughs> this is my standing whenever I'm having to do YouTube videos or even I take this with me on client shoots because you need a stand in when you're setting up an interview, wow. right? Yeah. And I put this and this is my stand in that way. If there's someone helping me, they don't have to just, just, uh, you know, sit there and that's a wasted body. Cause they could be like moving stuff. They could be setting up C stands. They could be doing a bunch of other things instead of just sitting there. And that's a wasted body. So I, I bring this with me everywhere. Uh, sits on a stand. And so, you know, now we can set exposure and, uh, focus and all that good stuff. Uh, and That's clients, incredible. they start taking selfies with it all wow. the time. And so it's a, <laughs> yes. a cool thing to have around. <laughs> Dude, this is that that's how you get over the social media beast right you just created your own instagram moment for like everyone else who's on the set <laughs> that's incredible oh, man. tell me about it they start everything what is that you know <laughs> they start taking selfies and and uh yeah it's a good uh icebreaker you know <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing yeah um Marcos, it's been incredible to connect with you in this way. And um, thank you so much for just taking this time to be with us and, and uh, hang out here on Gear Focus. Uh, we love having you. And um, just it's just super exciting. Thanks for being here. Uh, Marcos has an incredible YouTube all his own. You should absolutely go and check that out. He's done some incredible uh, videos on there. He's done some incredible uh, videos sponsored by Gear Focus as well. And um, and obviously, as you can all tell, he's just a wonderful human being. So uh, thanks so much for giving us just this time and your, your light, man. It's, it's awesome. It's really cool. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel, for having me. Yeah, of course. Cut.